<coughs> oh. Uh. Oh. That was a bit gnarly. Enjoy. Alright, so today's session day, I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona. I've been coming here for years and when I finished the session, I decided to come for some breakfast. This place right here is called Over Easy now, but it used to be called Fieldhouse. The reason I'm telling you that story is because I was here in 2017 and I remember distinctly having to leave Fieldhouse. Basically every single day, my agent or my friends got over all kept buying me breakfast. And one day I had to leave because there's no Wi-Fi inside or no service. I leave to check my bank to see if I had enough money to afford breakfast. And I guess I'm telling you that because as I sat there eating breakfast, I'm fortunate now that, you know, I'm running better and the running school's doing really well and I can afford breakfast. But I'm telling you that because sometimes things aren't in a great place. And in 2017, things really weren't in a good place. Like I literally had to check my bank account to see, you know, could I afford, I think it was like $60 for breakfast, which is very expensive, but that's America. But I just want to tell you to hang in there. Things can change, things can get better. And all you have to do is work hard and your circumstances can change. So I thought that was a really important message to share. And now you get to enjoy today's threshold session with some hills. So today I'm gonna to take you through a day in a life here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Today's a session day, so I've got up a little bit earlier. I've had some pancakes, some coffee. All right, so I absolutely nailed that pancake flip. And I promise you that was the first time, and I don't even make pancakes, but I just thought it would be quite fun for the YouTube channel. So what I do is I tend to just relax for a little bit now, let the breakfast digest, enjoy the coffee, go to the bathroom, you gotta do what you gotta do. Then I pack my bag, spare t-shirt, maybe a towel, a recovery snack, and of course, water. When I get the train and then I do some light stretching, some activation stuff, maybe some band work, or opening up the areas of my body that I know struggle, then I jump in there, warm up run, and this is nothing crazy, it's just enough to get the body a bit warmer before I start the session. If I was starting with the hills, or if I was doing some VO2 max intervals, well then I might almost do a little bit of threshold type stuff in the warm up. It wouldn't be a threshold pace, but I do this kind of three to four minutes where every minute I build that heart rate up a bit. That just makes sure that when you start the session, you're not still asleep and you're kind of ready to go. 
but let's go get this session done or I'll just sit here all morning. All right, so I'm back home. That's the session done. It was threshold in hills. It's not the key to being better, not just on camp, not just for professionals. You have to build lots of B plus workouts, not every session needs to be this knock it out of the park, smash it, go harder, go home mentality. You have to stack lots of pretty good sessions together and that's what helps you stay healthy, it's what helps you build this consistency and it also takes a little bit of pressure off the psychology that says today doesn't need to be brilliant. When you start to stack a lot of B plus sessions together, every now and again, without even trying to, one of these great sessions comes along. And that's when you know that the fitness is real because you've built this foundation and then it's got you to this place where, boom, brilliant session. And you know that it was organic, it was natural. It wasn't forced, it didn't feel psychologically stressful, it works. Today was just bread and butter, knocking out some threshold. This is the kind of work that's gonna build a solid foundation, you could say, to help me then start a marathon build up that'll help me qualify for the Olympics. It sounds straightforward, but it's not. It's difficult to just keep things simple. It's difficult to run at the right heart rates, keep the lactates under certain levels. That's where all athletes struggle. That's the struggle not complicating what can be very basic and very simple. So today was just knocking out five times 2K, keeping the heart rate at a good place, keeping the lactate level down. It probably went a little bit too high and that's okay. You don't beat yourself up about it. You learn from it, you execute better next time. The hills I really like to do. I think when you add something like hills to the end of a session, brilliant for par, brilliant for getting the breathing going, brilliant for form and technique, but they also just help you relax a bit on the early part of the session because you know you've got the hills coming up and you can push a little bit harder in those hills. To try and do stuff like this at home, pay attention to you know getting a good warm up done, get some drills added in there, start to look at maybe like an activation routine, on my website, joggingroom.com, there's a full activation routine, full warm-up routine, it's free, go check it out. But prepare yourself before you go do the session so that you're in a good place before the session starts. That's what helps recovery post-session because you've looked after the little things before you've even got started. Five times 2K, I kept the pace fairly smooth, fairly consistent, heart rate fairly smooth, fairly consistent. It was very windy, which is why I'm home to talk to you about the session, super, super windy but I just dealt with it. I don't even know if the GPS works there, but the effort was in the right place. The hills I was very happy with. I feel quite powerful, I feel quite strong, and that's a good sign for the 10Ks coming up. One final thing is that I think a mistake that athletes make is they train for three to four months or maybe two to three months for a big race, and then it's like there's this like lull because you're psychologically tired, but it's in that next sort of two to three month period that you lay the foundation for your next big result. Why professionals and why athletes that continue to progress do so is because you're using those next two to three months as almost the most important part. The fitter I can get myself, the better I can get my threshold paces before my next marathon build up, the faster the next marathon will go. You cannot be this peaks and valleys where you almost treat running like a boxer would. You get really out of shape and then you use your build up to get in shape and produce a result. If that's your current system, you're probably gonna find that the results aren't gonna get much better unless you just get better at taking care of the build up, executing the build up better, perhaps a faster course, perhaps better weather, perhaps a better execution on race day. But start to maximize that time between big races and that's what's gonna help you get better results. I'd love to sit and chat more, I'd love to go in and nap, but I now have to go and do some gym. So let's go to the gym.
gym can be that tedious part of running or whether you have to cross train or gym or it's the little extra things like your yoga your gym your foam rolling it's it's the stuff that takes a lot of time but it doesn't feel like there's that immediate satisfaction or more miles for the week etc it's it's tedious work but that's the work that separates I might be a pretty good runner with I could be a great runner once you start building this stuff in you'll really start to see how good you are as an athlete so today's gym was just a combination of uh, hip control work for my right hip learning to drive and push the force through that right hip which sometimes can be a flexibility issue sometimes it can be a imbalance issue one side stronger than the other one side side sorry is better coordinated than the other today starts to help some of those imbalances it starts to help some of that strength related issues and it's just motor memory when you're doing it when you get into the routine of doing it you notice the changes you notice benefits you notice the next time you go running your technique feels better you feel stronger within your own running technique that's when you can push harder in training more intensity more volume that's what leads to better results I do some calf loading because that's the first part of the body to hit the ground, the calf. I do a little bit of sort of plyometrics type work. I don't go crazy with that, but there is a good return. I want to keep some stiffness in those ankles, but the gym routine really supports the running program. It does have its own performance benefits, but it's there to support the training that I'm doing. And when I map out a big plan that you know, this is how you run two away at 10, the body has to be physically able to handle that plan. That's gym, it went really well. Now I'm gonna go eat because I haven't had enough. I'm gonna drink more water as if I haven't told you enough, more bloody water, but I need to eat, I need to drink some water, and then I'm gonna look at maybe like some mountain biking, not aggressive because I don't wanna get injured, but it is good fun, and mountain biking at altitude gets that heart rate fairly high so that's a good day so far threshold went well hills went well gym very good a little bit of foam rolling a little bit of recovery stuff rolling the arches a little bit if you're not the type of person when you get home that you're going to do the foam rolling or the stretching do it at the gym or do it at the back of your vehicle where you were training incorporate it in what you're doing so that when you go home you can just relax i've spoke a lot if you don't know what gym work to do what recovery stuff to do nutrition blah 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 that's what the running school's for I, I built the running school to help runners know all the stuff they should be doing around the training not just the training and how to train so check out joggingroom.com but let's go for a mountain bike ride okay guys so listen thanks so much for watching that is a fairly typical day at altitude so you're looking at training two to three times a day Normally, I would have done an evening run, but like I said, my doctor had been a little bit sore, and so I go out on the mountain bike, I wasn't pushing, and it's just, it gets the heart rate going, it builds a little bit of aerobic endurance, but it lets that adductor settle down. This was a very good day. How you define if a day is really good or not is, how did you execute the training? Not just, how much training did I do? Not just did I work really, really hard today, but did you execute the training at the right intensity and will you gain the benefits from that day that you intended to gain? That's what you need to start paying attention to. If you can build back-to-back -back days like this for months at a time, that's when you get some brilliant results. Running doesn't happen overnight, but if you do the little things, work on your recovery stuff, your nutrition stuff, your hydration, your psychological approach, things will get to a really good place. It doesn't happen overnight, but the hard work is worth it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like, go check out joggingroom.com for all kinds of tips and have a great day. Take care. Happy running.